basic we started the fire cider. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. How's that for a winter recipe? <coughs> that's a real good winter recipe. She has that's yeah, that's a good point. Rosemary Glenstone has a recipe for the fire cider. And if you can find it, that will that is a wonderful recipe to brew up for when you've got those when I call them the winter X because you don't kind of know what they are. You can go to the doctor and they'll tell you flu or this or that, but you can have different systems, uh, symptoms because sicknesses morph into different things. They do. And even if we have them in our same household, somebody in the household will have different symptoms. It could be the same thing. I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. Valley Field Herbals. Big purple tent. I got mine, I went two places. I went to Australia and also through California. Make sure, I, I am a big preserver of the old ways and I'll tell you this, if you have an interest in this, this is a labor of love because you always want to help everyone. But if you're gonna go pay for the schooling, make sure they're credited and you can use it here. Because there's a lot of things online now. If you wanna pursue this to help people and do it as a business, if you're not going through the proper schooling, you can't use it. If people trust you, you can always help them. But if you want to do that, make sure you go through somebody that you know you can use it in the United States. There's a lot of them out of there that, yeah, you're certified, but in Europe, it's Spain. So that's something you want to know. And I want to get back to your question. What was it again about beeburic medicine? The warming herbs? Okay, turmeric is always safe. Um, cayenne pepper, no higher than 60 units, is always safe. Um, because the blood vessels will explode if you have any kind of problems with blood pressure and you go too high. So you don't want to go over 60. That's always a safe bet. Cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. You can use any of those. Also good is oils if you have neuropathy. You have things in your hands. Neuropathy, your fingers swell. My mother has had it for years. I have a touch of it. Your fingers will swell so bad. You can see that bent finger starting because I crochet in it. <laughs> yep. And it, that will help. Just rub that warming. That warm does miracles for your circulation. And it's a little thing. And it doesn't smell bad either. <laughs> what is it? You should caution about um, the strength of the body, your skin, or you can um, and which of these herbs would have been accessible to your ancestors and how would it be? That's a hard one, you know, really, because a lot of them, I will tell you, in Ireland, things came from the spice trade. If you were looking, not hot peppers necessarily, those were seeds that could have been brought, but cinnamon, spice trade, turmeric, spice trade. Um, as to many other parts of the, country, uh, the globe too, there were many that came to Norway, spice trade, because we, as much as we love our Celtic family, there's a lot of Norwegian roots too, and they have a lot of the same backing. Um, good question, I don't know if everybody heard him, he wanted to um, know about the caution of burning your skin with some of these things. If you're going to use, and that's an excellent one, you can use just the plain spices, if you want to, you're afraid you'll burn your skin. Cayenne, shouldn't do that. If you make it into a salve, that's a great way. Or mix it in a good lotion, an organic lotion. Another good way. Um, you have to be careful with some oils. If you don't know what the carriers are or where they came from, if they're mixing them with something else, you can get burned. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're in the table by spilling cinnamon. Um, and that was probably one of the ones that you couldn't tell what exactly was in the oil because they used to use some of those to strip wood. Back in the day, they would use teak from wood and they'd also use cinnamon with teak oil. And if they use teak oil in it, it'll strip furniture. It'll actually strip paint. Did you have your hand up again? Yeah, I did. Um, it's kind of a long-winded question, but I'm curious about the Well, I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the bagpipes. <laughs> um, it's kind of along the same lines. Like, is there any like heat or cooling stuff to help with like arthritis or just joint pain in general? Kind of thing? Another good one. That's that's.
that's another big one. Um, she's wondering if there's different herbs that will either be cooling or heating with arthritis and different things. There's a lot of them out there. Arthritis is another one where you've got different levels of it. Um, when you have things like rhinoids or um, rheumatoid, that's one that you want to use tumor. You want warming things for it because it, what it does is your circulation is affected. And a lot of times you can't feel anything. Your fingertips are so cold that you could drop things. Now there's other arthritis, osseo, and things like that, that it burns. It hurts sometimes. So you don't want to use something that would be burning on that. A big reliever for those, believe it or not, is like calendula or comfrey, naturally cooling. Also deep tissue, what really gets first, into the deep tissue. What was the first one you said? Calendula okay. and comfrey. And also, you want to, um, the other one is Arnica. Arnica. You're welcome. Arnica is a yellow flower. It grows around here. If you have bruising of any kind, I have a little one that she has had health problems. She bruises. It gets deep into that tissue. And it's great. I have some in my purse all the time. I do. I have my pain away oil or I have a salve because you never know when somebody needs it. That's another good one. But that was a good question, thank you. I have to ask you, how do you explain to somebody the difference between turmeric and uh, curcumin? Oh, uh, curcumin or curcumin? Curcumin. Yeah. Curcumin, it's, it's yeah. kind of, I have no. a way. This is why I like you guys to be part of the class because there's a lot of things we're all learning and you have points that I might not think of right now. I mean, I explain it a certain way, but I want to know how you explain it. Have you harvested turmeric root before? No. Turmeric looks like a tuber. When you, when you take it out of the ground, it kind of looks like an iris and a sweet potato head. Because it has the color, <laughs> it has the color of a sweet potato, but yet it looks like an iris, and it's very close to the surface. The difference is, cumin has a very, or the one you're talking about, it has a very sharp scent. Cumin does not Ah, uh, gotcha. The, the difference between the two? How do you explain? Sorry, I'm not the Like I said, throw something. That's a good question. That The chemical part of that comes from the processing. If you're taking and just drying turmeric, or you're going to just use it um, as fresh, you're not gonna have run into that. If you're boiling it, you're sending it through an oil still like I have, and making it for preparation for real oil with no filler, you're still gonna activate that chemical part of it. So if you wanna explain to them that are, if I'm answering your question right, if you want to explain to them they don't have that chemical with it if they're just using the root. It's dormant basically. So I need a, one more potent than the other or are they, I mean. Yes, but when you do any kind of chemical reaction, just like having something, a tincture is different than essential oil. I had this conversation this morning. The chemical reaction is different. When you're, when you're using it, you're leaching, you're basically steeping in alcohol or you're making a tea. That's your tincture. When you're doing the oil process, it's activating all the chemicals in the plant. So you're now going on to a different process. With an essential oil of turmeric, I wouldn't ingest it because you've now activated a chemical part of it. Then you would just want to use a topic. What about capsule The heat from peppers? Is that what you're asking me? I can't no, hear. Like, like capsule form. Oh, oh capsule. I'm sorry. I thought you said capsicle. Capsicle. No, capsule form of curcumin. You can use that, but that again, you're in that chemical form. Once you're in the chemical form, you're getting different properties. When you go into the, the chemical form of it, it's more for heating. Um, it's more for warming. It's not going into the inflammation part of it so much. If you're taking turmeric as a whole, it has everything. But when you activate the different um, chemical compounds, then you go into a different, different level.
the spice. You, that, that's a good, the spice that does the inflammation and it also helps with into the muscles because you're ingesting it. Now, if you're using essential oils, I want to clarify something. Essential oils go into the muscle too. If you're using them on your skin, they're going into your bloodstream. They're going into your muscles. But when you activate that chemical, and I hope I'm explaining this clearly. If you need more, follow me. Anybody, please. Because okay. um, I don't know what my time limit If I run too long, somebody please let me know. Okay, awesome. Um, you know what, can I, I want to finish answering. Did I answer it okay for you? Kind of. Okay. When you, when you have any herb, all preparations, and this is why an apothecary closer, there's usually a lot of steps to it because I've done a lot of classes on it. Different preparations pull up different parts of the plant. That's why we do a home apothecary because you take the plants in storage and then you learn to use them in whatever way you need to. So you're trying to explain to them the difference. It's the difference. It's a different part of the medicine. You're now activating the chemical. So there's the difference is, is if you activate that chemical, it's used for something different. That makes sense. Yeah, I know it's deep. I know it's deep. And I never mind if you ask me. I think it's a little too much to, you know, there's a lot of good information on it. And I can explain it further later on. You can drink it. Um, apple cider vinegar is a good vessel as long as it's real apple cider vinegar or not. You know, you're always better with the unpasteurized. I want to cover one more thing with spices from your cabinet. Make sure you read your labels. They are allowed to use a lot of fillers in them now. So if you're taking something just for the spice, it could have some great talcum powder in it. That does not do well in our body. Oh, there's a lot of them if you play some great talcum powder, things like that. So read the label. And just because it says organic, still read it. Honestly. I have one more for this. That's okay. I will grab you in a second. What was your question again? I didn't mean to skip over you. Did you have another one? Okay. I believe cinnamon only has to have 51% true cinnamon of whatever variety it might be. To be sold? To be sold. Yes. Okay. That is the rest correct. Of it can be semi what he's saying that, this is a good point, he was saying that the food guidelines, cinnamon is a good example, we use it, everybody uses it and everything. Only 50% of your jar has to be real, or 51% has to be real cinnamon. No, it, it, then not necessarily. As long as it's food grade preservative, it can say that. That's how they get around with it. Yeah. Yeah, that works great too. It's in the chips. If it just says cinnamon, they're supposed to tell you if they use anything preservative wise. So if it just says cinnamon, you're close. You're close. You're about 90% safe, 89%, somewhere in there. And and you can also tell by taste. If you've ever tasted one and the other, you say, oh, that tastes really good, and then I got it here, and I'm like, our body's telling us something. It's telling us that's not pure. That's not what it was. Somebody also prepared their hand up. Is there, do you recommend drying herbs before you grow them in disease? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, that's another really good question. I, I would love to spend more time. I, you can always ask me anything, but... Um, teas work better preparation wise if you do dry them, but you can boil them and make an infusion if you need to. And you can use dry or fresh to make a tincture. You just have to watch it. But you're better off, if you're going to set anything up for a tea for your winter, you're better off drying it. You are. Because certain things do freeze, but you're still going to have moisture in it. With herbs, that does make a difference in what you're getting from them. It really does. And there's a lot of really simple ways to dry them. You can even hang them in your back laundry room if it's not too 
too much moisture. If you have a dryer vent venting in there though, I do say no. Because even though it seems dry, it's not. You're gonna get moisture on those and you're gonna get some mold. And that's another issue. <laughs> I don't want you to lose what you did all the hard work for. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Anybody else? One more thing about turmeric again. That's fine. it makes it warmer. Because black pepper, another good one for a buric medicine. You can use it if you have a really good oil that can be used as well for warming and that and that will boost the heat of it. That'll boost the natural chemical that causes a chemical reaction in its own. Just like people from old school medicine will add pinches of cayenne. It'll warm turmeric up and activate it a lot sooner. something they love because they'll go up especially a cat and they'll sniff at it and like, <laughs> they'll be like nope I don't know what you're trying but this isn't gonna happen <laughs> well I guess my time is done folks so you're welcome thank you all for coming I hope I answered everything thank you Any questions you can come visit me in the tent. I will answer anything else you might have. What is your tent? The purple tent over here. The big purple one. If you go for the back.